from that one i've got this article here courtesy of an, a magazine called filter mag regarding ghb and nightclubs now i've spoken about this ad nauseum on this podcast before but i wanted to read this article mostly because i'm getting to the point now where i'm getting a bit fed up with people complaining about ghb and nightclubs i really am i think some people complain about GHB and the way it makes people act on the dance floor and blah, 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 blah. It's sort of like a weird way to sort of like virtue signal about your, um, you know, your beha- about how well behaved you are in a nightclub, about how you are able to keep yourself together, about how you don't get lost in the source, about how you are a the, the, cons- the consummate raver. Or it's also from a point of like, class a drug snobbery which i never understood it happens a lot in nightlife and i think maybe i even bought into it a little bit when i was talking about crystal meth shit when i was kind of looking down my nose on that there's this weird attitude with people in dance music or in club culture where they have a little bit of an ego they have a little bit of a of a superiority complex when it comes to the stuff that they take other people take because they don't do ghb but they do md they do molly they do cat they do speed they do coke they suddenly feel like they are better than people who do stuff like ghb and it's like actually the reality of it is we're all as bad as each other we're all little by little rotting our brains damaging our inside right shortening our lifespan every time we decide to go out get drunk and do drugs we're all doing that in one way shape or form whether it's through cigarettes whether it's through alcohol whether it's through kratom whether it's through fucking happy hippo whether it's through fucking class a we're all damaging our insides and our fucking brains right and we're all kind of limiting the amount of time we actually spend on this spinning ball you know hurtling through space right with our family and shit by ingesting the things that we're ingesting but we do it because we know we're here for a short time not you know we're here for a good time not not a long time so we do it anyway we take the risk if that's the case maybe we should advocate for more people using stuff like ghb responsibly right if you're gonna do a drug if you're gonna do if you're gonna go out for a drink and i I think i've mentioned this before but because i've always been that person that tries their darndest to be um a a good a good partaker in fun right i try and drink responsibly i try and use the gear responsibly i try and be a good proponent so i'm not basically infringe infringing on other people's fun i'm not taking away from their time out i'm not fucking being overbearing i'm not sucking the oxygen out of the room right being responsible in that respect so no one needs to you know get you water no one needs to order an uber for you no one needs to hold you up or hold your hair up as you're vomiting no you're doing stuff as an adult you're doing stuff well you're doing stuff with fucking some level of um you know balance you're not going too crazy and if it does get too much you take your ass home by yourself and you don't fucking you know um lampoon yourself and other people so they can look after you it's not fucking fair so when i see articles like this I really am aware that this is true. The The title says, ban GSB at raves is dangerous. And I really do agree because I think in general, this police nanny state thing going on where we're going to be policing what people take and this is okay, but that is, but that, but that isn't, is fucking lame. So let's see what this person's writes in this particular article. It says, I slipped out of the store in a dimly lit basement uh, bathroom in Brooklyn. Soul food restaurant sliding a frosted glass dropper bottle and chubby three milliliter pink syringe into my friend's hand as he quickly replaced me. My mouth burned, a sore burning to develop in the side of my tongue. I had just dropped, uh, so I just squirted a dose of G, like a combination of GHB and its more potent precursor, GBL, into my mouth without the usual water or 7-Up chaser. GHB, GBL are central nervous system depressants, like alcohol and produce an alcohol-like intoxication. Is that what the high is like? Alcohol-like? Huh. GHB is a chemical that occurs naturally in the human brain, while GBL is an industrial chemical that can be manually or metabolically converted into GHB or GBH. Well, gave his body harm. In the US, GHB tends to be more common, while GBL is in a bigger in Europe. G as both chemical are colloquially known, is usually dissolved in water, sold as a clear liquid, and usually consumed orally. Yeah, I remember seeing people take it. Like, the first time I saw someone take it was when I went into the bathroom stall of Berghain with this group of lovely gay dudes, and they were passing it around each other, and I was like, nah, I'm good. And they basically filled a little bit into a cup, into the lid of the water bottle, 
um, and then they just took that swig and continued going on. So I'm assuming that's how it gets done. Um, I'm just weirdly. I see people also doing it as syringes. I don't know how people. How do people get fucking syringes into nightclubs? Like, how do you get a whole fucking syringe into a nightclub? Considering how they search you and stuff, getting a whole syringe into a nightclub is fucking wild. Um, but anyway, let's continue. I wasn't able to sip it slowly like I usually do. Neither was my friend. That's because we were at the popular New York City rave in mid-January called Unter, which has a harsh anti-G policy. A sign with a big slash GHB was taped on a cloak check, commanding partygoers to keep GHB and GLBL out and claiming that GHB is actively harming the greater dance music communities. Oh, so GHB is an issue also in the States. I thought it was just a, a, an issue here in Europe. So I guess in the gay scene and the queer scene all around the world, um, people are having issues with GHB. Um, data and G-related harms among New Yorkers is scarce. The New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene has not been able to comment by the time of publication. But in London, fatal G overdoses and G-involved sexual assaults have been shown to be widespread. More than a quarter of mostly British gay men reported that they were that they knew somebody who had died from a G overdose. Jesus Christ. Mostly British gay men reported that they knew someone who died from a GHB overdose. Fuck. The same proportion said that they had been subjected to sexual assault while on G found BuzzFeed News UK. And the unfortunate thing is nobody gives a fuck about male sexual assault. Whether it's a woman or whether it's another man involved, no one gives a fuck. So the statistics on this probably are really skewed because most guys probably don't even report it. You know how guys are, you always keep us suppressed and shit. And just generally people don't give a fuck. But I'm surprised that G has been used as a sexual assault thing because I always assumed, um, they always used to say that the sexual assault thing people used to use was what? Ketamine or something, right? It was ket. I didn't know they used G also. But I remember that it was used to think, because I think that's what they do in you, isn't it? Is it you? The show that Chris Leo was on, The Diddler, didn't the guy in you use ketamine? I think that's what they use, right, or something. So I didn't know it was also G that was a thing that they use in sexual assaults. That's fucking horrendous, man. Um, the one thing, the thing about G that gets you, that, that people like, the fact that you are kind of, you know, you, it, it's a disassociative and you become like a bit spacey is also one of the reasons why people like to use it to doing a sexual assault because you are not, you know, in control of your functions and shit. Um, wanting to prevent G-related harms is admirable. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that it's what Anta's policy is doing. I rushed my I rushed my dose in an unlit stall because I wanted to stay at the party. Exactly. Trans girls like myself and my friend get in for free and the music is good. I didn't want to face the punitive consequences of the signed promise. Possession or use of GHB at Hunter will result in being banned. The last word was extra big just in case we didn't get the message. My friend stepped out of the stall with a big grin on her face. How much did you do, I asked. Curious. In the past, I had measured her dose. Um, two millimeters, I think. I'm not quite sure. When using G, knowing your exact dose is key to having a good time. Half a milliliter, too much, often seems to be the difference between a warm, fuzzy feeling akin to alcohol or molly and the deathly slow breathing of an overdose. From what I realized reading online, people do g if i'm not mistaken as well because it hasn't got severe hangover um things you can actually be quite refreshed in the morning especially if you don't drink which you're not meant to drink with it that's what that's what i read as well people saying that they like to do g because of that so yes the feeling is warm and fuzzy like a good alcohol buzz or whatnot but more so because the hangovers aren't as harsh as other drugs um it continues in times past i shared tips and tricks for safer g use with my friend first shake the dropper since g tends to otherwise settle at the bottom making final doses extra potent draw up an exact amount probably for my friend at least one or 1.5 millimeters only redose after two hours with half of the amount of the previous dose never mix alcohol or ketamine maybe some of the information slipped to my mind okay that's that's the interesting part of it right i think for me personally i think any drug that requires this amount of effort this amount of foresight, this amount of planning, I'm probably not going to do it. You know, that's why I've gotten absolutely no interest in trying it whatsoever. Zero whatsoever. I'm a bit stuck in my ways, but I've got no interest. All of this shit to remember. The dope, like, it's like when you go on fucking, um, if you go like on a Reddit, like if you go on the EDM Reddit, you'll see the kids there because the EDM Reddit, especially most of the kids over there are like from, from America and stuff. 
and they take Molly really serious. They'll have like a party pack. There's like a pre-planning before you take it. They'll do the dosage of Molly based on your height and your body size and your body mass index and shit, right? Um, they'll they'll take it at a specific time. They'll time it. Have timers on their phone. They'll know what to eat during the day, what to drink, what to what to do after. It's really too much for me personally. All that planning just for like a couple of nights. It's not that deep. So when it goes to those. When it gets to this sort of like scientific level in terms of having fun, I'm out. You know what I mean? It's too much. I'd rather, you know, have a whiskey and coke and just fucking dance on the dance floor, do a little bit of whistling and get on my bike. It's not that deep really. I don't need to do all this stuff. Maybe some of the information set my mind. Um, after all, it just wanted to take it in and out. The bathroom undetected. 30 minutes later, when the G hit, my friend began to feel nauseous. I think I need to sit down, she told me. She eventually <laughs> she eventually vomited in a trash can on the side of the dance floor. I looked around to see if anybody had noticed. I went to see uh, I went to get her some water. They were uh, they were only selling it. Nothing was free. So you do G, you take too much, you end up vomiting in the trash can, you need some water to clear your head to get you fucking hydrated and you can't get some free water because they only sell it. Great. The nausea luckily ended up being a full extent of the um, excessive of uh, dosing harm, but it could have ended much worse. I also love us ravers, right? You're happy to buy drugs for like 50 euros, 50, 100 pounds plus, but in a moment somebody says you have to pay for water, suddenly you're like, oh, I can't buy, I can't buy that. It's too much. It's like, come on, bro. You just spend fucking 500 quid on fucking drugs. Like you can't just buy a bottle of water. Fucking crazy. The harms posed by G bands. It's unclear how many people, if any, have been barred from UNTA and its new sister party, Large Marge, as a result of the event's anti G policy. But in my experience, the policy doesn't stop the use. Instead, it inspires the fear of being humiliated and kicked out, driving riskier, rushed use of the drug that requires precise dosing. That's true because the same thing happens here in the UK with drinking laws. Our licensing laws in the UK are fucking R worded. Some places in the UK, especially outside of London, you can't go to a bar or a club after the hours of like 2 a.m. So what will happen is like these local pubs in those towns, those small towns, will have drink deals from like 5 to like 8 or 9 or whatnot, right? To get people in the pubs sooner and get them drinking more. So they'll have, I don't know, um, two for one pints, a half price on cocktails, whatever it may be. Then that pub will unfortunately close at like 11 p.m., maybe 10 p.m. Those people are buzzed and looking for a good time. They'll go to their local nightclub that's also got some drink deals on, especially early between the hours of 10 to 12 because they want to get those people to come in, not go home and go straight from the pub to their club. So then by the time those guys leave that nightclub at 2 a.m. from a, a day full of drinking from 5 to 2 where they've been just shoved, you know, this kind of drink down their throat because of the fucking limited hours of opening, they are steaming, which is why people, when they stumble out of these fucking clubs at 2 a.m. in the morning, which is way too early, especially if you've been drinking between 5 without eating, they are steaming and they're ready to fight. They're ready to cause a ruckus, piss on people's walls and shit, shit everywhere. That's why it gets crazy because the licensing laws are too strict. They're not open enough. They need to be more broad so you can maybe drink in bars and clubs for like a prolonged period of time so that people are coming out drips and drops. You're not having everybody rush out at the same time. That's also a bit of an issue at clubs. All the clubs, especially clubs in like, you know, Liverpool Street Station and Shoreditch, that whole strip, they all rush out at the same time because the clubs all close at 4 a.m. Loads of antisocial behavior, loads of police presence. That means obviously the taxpayers like myself have to pay more money to have those people on the streets. It's fucking annoying. It really is. So all of those laws they put in place to limit drinking doesn't do shit. It's like the it's like the smoking ban. All my friends that smoke still smoke. Yes, they have to go outside to smoke, but they all just it's become an uh, it's become a culture amongst itself now. That's now become a thing. Going outside to get some fresh air and have a smoke, do some people watching. So that whole smoking ban. Oh, you're not going to smoke inside. Okay, cool. We we'll just go outside then. It doesn't stop anything. If you want to do it, you're going to do it anyway. So if you, if you let them do it, make them do it in a safe environment. That's what I think. Um, it continues. The policy could also impact how people respond when something goes wrong. Under a ban for life threat, you are less likely to call an ambulance or a friend or to alert the security team. Exactly. We see that people try to hide the situation and deal with it themselves in what can be, cas in what be, can be cases of life and death. And I've definitely seen this. I've seen this, in, especially when I went to Berlin. I saw many people just get chucked out of the nightclub if they were if they looked like they were spiked, or if they looked like they took too much, if they looked like they got too fucked up or whatever. 
they just chucked them out. Like, hey, we don't want you in our club. Don't die here. Die outside. <laughs> I saw it happen so many times. I was like, whoa. And I was like, okay, cool, fair play. Which I get because, you know, if you're a responsible adult and you're going out, you should be responsible for yourself. You shouldn't put that responsibility on the nightclub to look after you. They should obviously provide you a space that's quote unquote safe for you to dance and have a good time. But you should also look after yourself. That doesn't mean leaving your cup and turning your back to your fucking glass and talking to a fucking stranger, right? Keeping your eye on your drinks and, you know, making sure you only take the stuff that you brought with you or maybe the only people that you trust. All that stuff is important. But the brutality that I saw with these bars and these clubs, security, chucking people out in the streets because they took too much and they didn't want to die inside their clubs was fucking hilarious, man. I'm not going to lie. It continues. Um, Ines Macedo and Marina Cunha of Cos was that of Cosmicare, a Portuguese harm reduction um, organization, told um, Filter. If we look at the case reports of GBO and GHB deaths, we see that almost all happened when mixing G with other drugs or while sleeping it out. Oh, okay. So it's not actually G that's the problem. It's when you do a lot of it and you mix with other shit. Isn't that the same with all drugs? If you do too much or you mix it, it's always going to lead to fatal things. Unless it's obviously it's been cut. Because that's one thing we don't have an issue with in Europe. We don't really have the fentanyl issue that you guys have, right? So it's not that, you know, it's not as bad as it probably could be. But this explains quite a lot. This makes so much sense here. Um, so the, the deaths, we see that almost all kind of mixing it, but both very common responses to avoid tipping off the organizers to use of G. The policy does not seem to be having its intended effect. Anecdotally, other attendees are still using the sedative. The sedative. At large marge held in January 18th, one raver chatted openly with me about how he and his friends were currently Ging out. So were many of the friends. So, so this band they have at this club and these, these parties doesn't work. The same seems to go for other parties and contexts. If I like G, I'll go to a sauna. I will find a way. They do G in saunas. Yo, gay guys get it in, innit? The people in the queer scene, they have fun, boy. Gay guys have fun. Imagine tripping out in a fucking sauna while getting your little your little minka sucked and shit. <laughs> getting your little chiggly do toked and tugged while you're fucking rolling on the on the old D R U G S. Crazy. If I like G um and I go to a sauna, I'll find a way. London based um chemsex harm reductionist Ignacio Labayen de Inza told me of establishments with strict no G policies two or three years ago they would check but you could see people passing out Seva Graniak, the organizer of UNTA and Large Marge, declined Filter's request to comment for the story, but the origin of UNTA's policy seems rooted in a legacy of queer rave culture. In Berlin, GHB is a fucking no-no, and they kicked you out if you get exposed, caught with it, or caught overdosing, wrote on Reddit. That's the thing, though. It's a big no-no, but everyone does it. It's a big open secret. But I guess now, because it's got such a bad reputation, everyone's just not talking about it. They'd rather just do it, you know, in silence. Um, yeah, G G is GBL. It's, it's uh, I think I've said it here on the article. It says here G is this um, uh, rodeo. G is what do they call it? Actually, the term. Uh, let's scroll up here. What does it say? Uh, it's an G a GHBR nerve. Our central nervous d d system depressants, like alcohol, produce an alcohol-like intoxication. GHB is a chemical that occurs naturally in the human brain, while GBL is an industrial chemical that can be manually or metabolically converted into GHB. In the US, GHB tends to be more common, while GBL is a bigger in Europe, and G, as both chemicals and colloquially known, is usually dissolved in water and sold in clear liquid and consumed orally. Oral consuming. No pause. I heard that they had a few years ago, someone had died right in the club from mixing G and alcohol. It seems they assume people with G either can't use it sensibly and will fuck themselves up or that they will use it nefariously and spike somebody's drink. A different Reddit user about Bergheim, the world's most famous club. The legendary club um, has allegedly responded to club goers um, intoxicated on G with violence, a medium writer claimed in 2018. Oh, really? Okay. 
Uh, Anti-G sentiment has been alive and well for some time in Western Europe. A 2009 London party warned keep GHB and GBR at clubs. A 2010 Berlin event commanded do not give GHB. Take care of yourself, your friends and others. According to Google Translate, another Berlin party started in 2017. No GHB. The dominant attitude of rave organizers regarding GBL use is prohibition. Is a uh, yeah prohibitionism, and Portugal is following this general tendency. In Lisbon, one of the most well-known clubs has a specific materials advertising G usage since 2018, and other queer clubs. Ravers describe harsh practices from staff in situations involving G. Unter's GHB policy seemed to first be introduced in October 2018. So. Yeah, it doesn't work, basically. Everyone still does it. Everyone still takes it. Um, these laws are fucking crazy. These laws are fucking crazy. But yeah, like I said before, I just would rather we live in a world where everybody has some level of responsibility when they're doing whatever they want to do. Um, whether it's staying up late to play video games, whether it's fucking gambling, whether it's drinking alcohol, doing drugs, whatever your fucking vice is, whatever the thing that is that you do that occupies a lot of your time or your free time, do it somewhat responsibly and don't be a burden on other people. There needs to be more conversations around grown-ups acting like grown-ups and not fucking acting like children when they do certain things and then basically harming and destroying everyone else's good time that's not fucking fair and i think when it comes to drugs there is no hierarchy there is no fucking snobbery involved in drug taking all drugs are bad fundamentally all drugs are bad that includes alcohol that includes fucking cigarettes it's all bad it's all fucking bad if you want to live a prosperous good life you should probably not do anything and go to church but if you are going to do it have some balance and do them well that's basically the, the 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 long and short of it it shouldn't be like a, oh because i do molly uh crystal meth is, is beneath me it's like bro it's all fucking horrible it's all chemicals it's all man-made shit it's all fucking toxins you put in your body it's all harmful it's all damaging your brain your vital organs right it's shortening your fucking lifespan it's not good all of it is terrible so if that's the case do it responsibly or don't do it at all that's my advocacy in this sort of thing personally but again what do I bloody know? Absolutely nothing because I am a big fat redact.